Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today, we embark on a rather Halloween-appropriate adventure, because it seems this secret garden beneath the ruins of Moonhaven is uh, a little less tranquil and idyllic than it appeared at first glance. At least if the moldering coffins scattered everywhere are anything to go by. So let's have a look around. Over and through. Always room for more? We got a weird mishmash of things here. Friend. Alright, I'll bite. Alchemist's fire goes to Carlac. And then we also found Nutbuster. A charming little rock. The word Nutbuster has been scraped into it with a claw. Mildly unsettling. Poo Scraper. Fecund and revolting. The abyss is not the worst place this has been. Shovel's Friend Finder. Just because it's pitted with rust doesn't mean it isn't ideal for digging up new friends. Friend. Eyebrows, horns, and rosy cheeks have been drawn upon this skull in a number of bodily fluids. Well, I mean, it's already in my pack, so that's good. Uh, we also have a copy of A is for Azith and Other Gods, Volume 2, I believe. I believe we've read that one. Yeah, yeah. Azuth, Bane, and Besheba. That's magic, murder, and misfortune. Though it's hard to say which one might apply to this scenario. I'm sure we'll find out shortly. Curious. Better not be cursed. That is indeed curious. Ah. I mean, we'll take them. I really should use more scrolls. I just need to, uh, at some point, go through everything we've got and make sure Gale's got all of them scribed before we actually use any of them. Oh! <laughs> uh, hi! Oh, boy. That guy's blown a casket. I do like that, though, that he immediately went for reinforcements. That's fun. Um, alright. So... Yeah, just two. That's no big deal. Let's trim the next one in the queue. Nice. Oh, wait. Right. Right, because we were surprised the first round. I was thinking we were in, like, the middle of the round because we just took actions with Shadowheart and Rex, and they're at the top of the queue. Yeah, sorry, just um, total mental disconnect on that. But now we should take out the guy we've already started hitting. And I know just the way to do it. Carlac. Let's cook with fire, baby. Aye, aye. Actually, let's do some setup real quick. Oh, I can't even catch my breath. Oh, fuck yes. Still not sure if that actually helps, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Yes. Oh man, I will never, ever get tired of that. Come on, can't stay idle. Time to press ahead. 
Solid. Though, sadly, not enough to stop him from having a full-blown coffin fit. Oh, uh, no thank you. Honestly, I, I love the concept of this fight. I think we're a little overpowered for it, but... Uh, you know what? Why don't we expedite things for them? Jimmy on the go. Nothing important is ever easy. Hop, hop. You're trying to get over here, right? Here you go. <laughs> okay, so each coffin does indeed contain another undead. Also, turns out uh, Carlac's pretty handy with the skeleton key. Who knew? A rough tempest I will raise. Let's go for another. Swiftly now. Ah, just short. Got to focus. That's fine. He's in the right place. We've got these two over here as well. guy. Yeah, he's pretty boned. Oh, no. On my way. Two left. Make that three. No thanks. And yes, he's going for another one. I'm heating up. Let's help him out with that. Maybe hop. Still breathing, despite everything. Oh, boo! Let's finish this. You know what? That's fair. Let's uh, trim this one. I speak, they burn. Uh, or not? Got to concentrate. Oric? Nothing will stand in my way. Thank you. Need to act fast. Might as well trim this one too. Which just leaves you. Oh no, not another Skella man. What will I do? This is going to feel good. Blood comes easy these days. Bye forever, pal. Goodbye. Oh, though we do have a scroll. Let's finish these guys off, then we'll check that out. I'm ready. No choice but to keep going. 
going. And we are done. Nice. Scroll of Summon Quasit. How intriguingly specific. Scroll of Bone Chill. That's a... Wait, that's a cantrip, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the same cantrip we just gave Oric. Can we, uh... Can we scribe that? At the ready. We can. Okay, well, fantastic. I've got a long road ahead. What about this one? Summon a quasit from the lower planes. Inky notes slash across the margin, the angle of the handwriting suggesting urgency. Perhaps warning. Gail, can you uh Seek and you shall find me. You can. Okay. Find familiar cheeky quasit. Your desire. Well, I mean, we've got to check that out. I guess we can live without the sphere of self-immolation. So that's fine familiar, but it's separate from this one. It'd be great if we could actually double those up. Recognize the tiny fiend, a quasit. Wicked creatures often used as familiars. Wait, you're not Illy. Ah, uh, no, no. Well spotted. I, I am not, in fact, an Illy. But I did find your summoning scroll in the coffin of a dead man. I don't suppose you know who that might be. to the butcher. So, your shovel's master now. Fine. Oh. Wait, so... The herbalist killed this town. We know the blacksmith. That's Samson. Not sure about the others, but, uh... Tell me more about this... Illy. Master Illy, wonderful. He tricks them, heals them, <laughs> then they die. So sudden, so mysterious. Shovel comes, shovel takes them, then we raise them, make them walk. Necromancer, your kind call him. Fun, I call him. Oh, wow. Okay. So that also explains the suspicious poison. I chalked it up to a murderous apprentice, but it was just straight up the the herbalist. He was using his position as town healer to build up his stock of undead. Until the Dark Justiciers shut him down. Which would make sense if the Dark Justiciers were trying to press gang people. It would put them at cross purposes. Uh, Shovel, was it? I... Don't suppose you know what became of your master. Don't know. Don't care. Wait, are you horny? For the book. Illy never shut up. Book this, book that. Blah. I mean, I guess if anyone was going to be horny for a book, it would be Gail. I would love to hear more. Oh, oh, master should go see. Talk to the mirror. And remember, balsam... Good for burns. Noted. What a weird way to end that conversation. Man, I wish, I wish we'd been able to bind oh, shovel mind, to Oric. Well, in it. Sadly, warlocks can't scribe scrolls, so it was really only an option with Gale. Maybe if I respect into wizard and then back to warlock. 
Oh, but Auric can talk to him. You recognize the tiny fiend, a quasit. Wait, you're not Illy. Uh, no, no, I, I am also not Illy. But why don't you tell me about him? My master, tall, skinny, prick with ears. So, you're Shovel's master now. Fine. Shovel, huh? That's an interesting name. Master Illy calls me Shovel. Don't like it? Change it. Uh, I mean, what would what would you like to be called? Don't care. In that case, I I guess Shovel is fine. So, well, first, Master, gutting locals, raising the dead, making them walk, making them scream. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you on that, but I take it those are all things that your previous master did? Yes. Steel bodies, tear them, then Illy puts them back together. Again and again. When he wasn't horny for the book. Oh, book this, book that. He loves the book. I must say, you certainly have quite a way with words. <laughs> Good with tongue. Good at cutting them out, too. Tell your secret. Talk to the mirror. And remember, balsam. Good for burns. Okay. Uh, noted. Anything else? Oh? <gasps> A spell shite. When the fisting starts, use the sparky magic to call Shovel. Let's kill everything. Phrasing, please. Go on, mirror knows. Yeah, yeah, uh, got it. He really wants us to check out that mirror. Which I guess we will do, but let's let's finish cleaning up here first. Okay, looks like that's non traversable, so that's not a hidden nook. That's just scenery. Ooh, dark journal. Maybe I need more pockets. We'll check that out shortly. Can't slow down. Let's have a look. that wall. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's just a wall. Fair enough. And I guess that's it. Not really seeing much else. Just a few errant pieces of vendor trash lying around. So I guess we should go check out that mirror, which does really feel like a bad idea, but but Shovel certainly seems enthusiastic about us messing with it, so what could possibly go wrong? Let me just clean up our inventory real quick. I suppose we should read that journal before we mess with the mirror. Dark Journal. The Journal of Illin Toth. 
Sixth Night Hall, 1371 DR. I pay no service to the gods, but by some blessing this village believes me and my apprentice to be simple healers. My tattoos are hidden, my red robes locked away, and my lab secured. I have not heard the word they since we arrived, and only my apprentice knows me as Ilin Toth. This place is not ideal for my research, but I can never return home. Not the way I escaped. I'd be put to death, with worse to follow. The work here is simple and allows me to continue my research at night. But progress is slow. Reanimation seems easy, but restoring life? That prize eludes me. The tome contains the magic I need, but it fights me at every step, as does my apprentice. At least my familiar has made it easy to secure bodies without raising suspicion. This will take time. Will the Zalkirs find me before I can bring her back? I cannot say. But if they do come for me, they'll have to face the guardians I've raised. Okay, and another piece of the puzzle falls in place. The herbalist was a former Thay who fled his homeland with a book of necromancy he stole, intent on resurrecting someone important to him. And the unfortunate villagers were just a resource to be exploited. Weave moss, used in elixirs of arcane cultivation. I believe that's the one that gives us an extra spell slot. Which I really should make use of. I believe elixirs last until your next long rest. Alright, let me just clear these containers real quick, then we will uh, see through a mirror darkly. Let's pop a Guidance real quick, just in case. There it is. Looking ahead. Speak your name. Well... First things first. Slim chance of failure. Nope, we're good. The magic is old and wavering, but you recognize it. The mirror is a thinking lock, hiding some secret. The face is crafted to be pleasing, but the personality is just a reflection of the wizard that created it. Speak your name. Well, we know the name of the creator. That's Ilan Toth. We have the journal for reference and expertise in performance. Maybe we can bluff our way through. Because I, Ilan Toth. My master was human, pure, and true. You are not Ilan Toth. If you are his ally, step forward and declare it. Yes, yes, uh, that is, you know, on, upon further reflection, that is indeed what I meant. I'm, I'm an ally of Ilan Toth. I, it's what I was going to say, but you interrupted me before I could finish. Only a true ally of Ilan Toth may pass. What think you? Of the Zalki known as Zastam. You remember stories of Zastam, a powerful lich in Thay who made deals with dark gods. Oh, that's a tricky one. On the one hand, you'd expect a necromancer to have some sort of mutual respect for a lich. 
But at the same time, why would they gate it behind a skill check if that wasn't the right answer? The most scurrilous of knaves. He owes me five silver. You are no so clear. But are you wise? Tell me, why might one use balsam ointment? I have it on good authority. It's used to treat burns. A poor choice. Wait. You will be purged. It's wasting time! <laughs> Dang it. Shovel. Don't like that. Oh, yeah. Really don't like that. Uh, we should go. Damn it, Shovel. <laughs> You're definitely getting spayed. All right, so see, this is what happens when I don't pick up every container I see. That's ten... Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, so is that just, like, in there now? No, wait, there we go. Which way? Uh, mind the line. fire. Lucky. No one back home will ever believe this. And you know what? Shovel, dude. What the heck? Looking ahead. <laughs> run, run, or Sparky gets you. Okay, you got me. Ha ha ha. Now how do I turn it off? Sit on it and call it Daddy. It's a fire. How do you think you stop it? Or run squealing. Sparky gets tired. Eventually. I like you less now, Shovel. How much farther can I go? Oh, who am I kidding? He's still great. Can we uh can we still do something with a mirror? You are not my master. If you are his ally, step forward and declare it. Yep, yep, that's me, Ellen Toth's ally. Uh, not like that last guy who got incinerated just as I was coming in. That guy sucked. Only a true ally of what think you of the Zolkir known as Zastan? Oh, yeah, he sucks too. You are no Zolkir. But tell me, why might one use balsam ointment? Why, it's used to clean wounds, of course. Everyone knows that. What kind of fool would say that it's used for something else? Acceptable. Finally. If you could see anything in me, what would it be? Oh, uh, well. We know Ilan Toth was trying to bring someone back from the dead, but we don't know if it was out of love. And he didn't seem particularly taken with vengeance. I guess I'd use it to remove the deadly tadpole from my brain? You seek to survive. You seek power. Be welcome. Oh, good. A well-guarded laboratory. What were they hiding down here? Uh, that is an excellent question, Auric. I guess we're about to find out. Hmm. Looks like an open space behind this wall. I like Gale, but I'm keeping all my good gear well out of sight. Everything fancy he touches meets a grisly end. Uh, that's nice. Thanks, Karlak. 
Always happy to hear from you. Nah, that looks like it's just a stylistic choice. I don't think that's actually a hollow space we can enter. Let's scoop up all these lore books. We'll read them all at once. Basilisk oil. Intriguing. Can't say I'm familiar with that. Though, given the name, I have to assume it has something to do with petrification. Always room for more? I see a copy of Fringe Philosophies, Volume 5, on the far side. That's one of the books in our to-read pile. The Evil Eye, that's one in our pile as well. Oh, okay. Let's maybe back off on the obviously trap chamber for a moment. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Easy. This place is hungry for blood. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. So, I'm thinking we'll save that for last. Let's finish clearing the rest of the room real quick. Yeah, the evil eye, that's, um... That's another book in our to-read pile. Bracers of Defense. Become the Bulwark. You gain a plus two bonus to armor class as long as you're not wearing armor or holding a shield. Delicate twists of magical iron, painstakingly gilded, have been fashioned into these fortifying bam braces. That's actually not bad. I mean, in theory, that would be a good fit for Auric. Though it would also depend if it actually stacks with mage armor, since apparently a number of things don't. Want to dance? A long way to go still. Um, I mean, we can give him a shot. It's not like these gloves of heroism are really doing Gale much good. I'm kind of sorry to give up the gloves of missile snaring, but... I'd love to, thanks. It makes more sense to give them to Gale than it does to Carlac. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll temporarily swap. Let's move. We'll toss the gloves to Gale. We'll slap the bracers on Auric. At a glance, it does it seem is. to work. That's an immediate two-point bump on AC. Is that blood? No, never mind. That's a pretty solid find. Okay, and then Basilisk Oil is used to remove petrification. So we'll have to keep an eye out for any statues that might be petrified creatures. Petrification is a classic means of preserving fan-favorite characters in the D&D setting. I think it happened to both Volo and Minsk, both of whom are in this game. So, you know, it's clearly something Larian has in their brain. And yes, we have definitely read this one. Away with ye! So three new books, plus two we already have in our to-read pile. Let's finish scouring the room, then we'll... Then we'll whittle down the stack a bit. Though I have to imagine the Bracers of Defense were our big prize here. That and the, um, you know, the uh, ominous, trapped, necromantic tome. I'll be honest, I mean, I'm not sure Orc would use something like that, but at the same time, he has shown questionable judgment when it comes to arcane power. For example, he is a warlock of the... Cosmic Space Squid. I'll probably end up leaving it to the Raiders, run a quick little poll. 
I'll take that way that. I can blame them if it all goes sideways. That is uh, hard to bear. Oh, but this, this is fantastic. I mean, I'm not seeing anything we really need. Oh, actually, animate dead. Beyond our power level right now, but that might be a fun addition to Gale's arsenal. I'll need to check to see if it affects attitude of NPCs. I mean, generally speaking, in an actual tabletop game, walking around with cadavers following you would garner a bit of a negative reaction in most civilized areas, but... But I could also see them ignoring that for the sake of gameplay. It would make sense for NPCs to react negatively, but... At the same time, you'd be... You'd essentially be burdening certain classes. The necromancer specialists, the spore druids with what amounts to a colossal inconvenience tax. So that's definitely the sort of thing I could see the developers just sort of hand-waving for the sake of playability. Lolf's candle used to make malice. Glowing stones that flicker in the darkness. Some travelers find themselves following these lights, thinking they might have found a friendly fellow wanderer. Malice. That's got to be a poison. Right, and then Viridian crystals. Got to catch them all. So what is this thing? I mean, at a glance, it looks an awful lot like an ichthyosaur. It's an interesting choice. Classically, you'd expect them to go wyvern or dragon. Oh, wait, did I... No, no, I left, um, right. I glimpsed the key, but I was so busy yammering about some nonsense, I forgot to actually pick it up. Let's see here. Although it's rusted now, it seems this key was once well-maintained. It was precious to someone. Right, right. Now let's get a gander at those lore books. Research notes. Notes detailing a series of unholy experiments. Raised dead. Failed. Gone too long. Body decomposed. Reanimation. Failed. Came back as ghoul. Had to kill again. Speak with dead. Failed. Answers unhelpful. Clone. Failed. Needs living tissue. Reanimation plus clone? Failed. Had to kill both ghouls. Resurrection. Failed. Why? Magical curse? True resurrection. I have reached the limit of my skills and resources. The book offers help. Dare I accept? Interesting. Still no context on who he was trying to raise, but it was obviously very important to him. The Collectinea Rubrum. A compendium of dark arcana. You turn page after page filled with strange alchemical sketches and formula. Some are written plainly, some in runes and scripts you barely recognize. There are guides to transmuting metals and recipes for weapons of war. But more than anything else... The book is concerned with reanimating dead flesh. 
Right. Moonhaven Logbook. A detailed record of the travelers sighted in Moonhaven Village. No doubt to keep track of which people he felt were safe to... Harvest. Woe to the traveler who happened to pass through Moonhaven. The book is filled with pages and pages of observations, tracking travelers and people in the village. You turn to the final pages. 26. The Lysis. Oliver Singe, merchant, arrives in Moonhaven, departs next day. Kalishite. Seventh of Eliant, stranger, name unknown, passes through. Not Thayan. Rashimi? Fourteenth of Marpanoth, three men in black armor pass through. Not Thayan. Second of Uptar, Hackett, journeyman, passes through. Not Thayan. Thirtieth of Uptar, raid. Black armored soldiers, some damage. Not Thayan, but dangerous. Fourteenth of Nighthall, the book's key gem has gone missing. Familiar ordered to watch my apprentice. Fourteenth of Nighthall. Singe passes through. Doesn't stop. That's the merchant from the 26th of Elysis. Fifteenth of Nighthall. Familiar reports apprentice disappeared near well. We'll observe. Eighteenth of Nighthall. Raid. Same soldiers as before. Townsfolk taken. Twentieth of night all, smoke on horizon. Raid? Okay, not quite what I was expecting. He was... It sounds like he was more looking out for any Thay, any Zalks that were coming after him. But this, though, this kind of throws me because... The assumption I was starting to get was that the Dark Justiciers were the one who attacked the village, but Black Armor could easily reference... The Hell Riders, because that note we found about strange riders, specifically drew attention to their fancy black armor. So in theory, it could have been Hell Riders who raided the place, who passed through once. They passed through on the 14th of Marpanoth, but then raided twice, once on the 30th of Uktar, and again on the 18th of Nightall. But that would also fit my theory about the Dark Justiciers press-ganging the villagers. I will note, though, that this does at least explain why the keystone for the book was hidden under the blacksmith shop. Apparently, the apprentice made away with it and stashed it there. Just his bad luck that he happened to stash it in the hunting grounds of a, a crazed follower of Lolth. All right, let's let's go through the other books we found here. See if they offer any additional clues or context. The Evil Eye. If one looks at the eye etched into this cover long enough, they appear to blink. While the number of trinkets and bargains a hag personally acquires means that her powers will be unique compared to that of her sisters, hags as a whole can still be divided into three subcategories. Night Hags. Named as such for their ability to haunt a mortal's dreams, slowly devouring vital essence until the victim's soul can be trapped into the hag's soul bag. They are known for being petty, selfish braggarts. Sea hags. Known for devouring their victim's soul. Sea hags can terrorize and kill with a single look. They reek of fish and are incapable of making a proper cup of tea. Odd takeaway, but okay. Green hags. They are beautiful. They are powerful. Speak not a word against them. Ah, okay, well. Uh, not much in the way of context for this situation, I think, but... But I do suspect that the author may have been, you know, compromised during his research, perhaps? Question mark. Thematically, I suppose it would also make sense that Illin would be researching creatures known for for forging arcane bargains. Fringe Philosophy, Volume 5. It's actually got the same cover as Evil Eye. 
The publisher's note claims this volume promotes magical theory too radical for the mainstream. This excerpt is attributed to High Artificer Thora Bryn of Baldur's Gate. I suppose they seek to silence me, believing that an artificer of the High House would not stoop to publish in any volume outside of the great Gondian journals they so diligently guard. But they forget that I am not so grand. Before I lent my name and my knowledge to the High House of Wonders and all the marvels therein, I was not but a lazy farm girl who liked to look up. And that was how I first saw them, the slow and serene earth motes, entire mountains migrating through the sky above. It was later I learned of their origins, of the ancient Netherese Empire that fashioned them, of the residual magic so potent it sustained them still. The wizards of Netheril carved marvels out of the mundane, lifted the earth aloft for industry, for sport. It was later still, after I earned my place at the High House, that I learned of the long shadow Netheril cast along the evolution of our craft. That their great flying cities fell in folly and flames does not diminish the wonders they wrought, and this stubborn aversion to studying them, to learning what they learned, is the very antithesis of Gon's teachings. Yes, many of the catastrophes inflicted upon the centuries were fruit born of meddling with Netherese seed. Yes, their last shining bastion fell into shadow, their lore twisted to Shar's dark and destructive designs. And yes, I say again, whether the High House will sanction it or no, to study the very flame of creation is worth it, even should the fires consume us. And again, that does match the theme. A powerful wizard searching for a solution to an impossible problem, no matter how hazardous or forbidden. Let's go ahead and read this one, too. We found this in the Spider Cave. Disorders of the Nerves and Mind. A treatise. A medical compendium describing varied mental disturbances and their treatments. By cleric physician Glenn Earl Mack. There came to me a woman, whom I shall henceforth call R, greatly distraught at the unusual tempers of her husband, whom I shall henceforth call B. Three months prior he'd suffered night sweats, crying out from sleep that he bore the mark of chaos. Two months prior he'd taken to calling himself by the name Saravak. One month ago he'd speak of little else but the throne for which he is destined. I attended to be at the couple's farmhouse. He sat calmly at the table, an unknown book clutched to his chest. I detected no curse nor loathsome spirit upon him, nor the presence of magic. Yet upon shining the light of candle flame upon him, he raised the book high and exclaimed, The deaths they bring shall awaken the father, and through them he will rise. I snatched the book from his hand and flung it into the hearth, where it burned not in red or yellow flame, but pure black. It left but a single scrap, reading, He foresaw his coming death, and seeded his essence across the land. B shivered and sighed, as if waking from a nightmare. He had no memory of the book, nor the words he had spoken. Diagnosis. Unspecified neurotic enthrallment. Treatment. Herbal tincture of garlic and drace. Sip thrice daily until exhaustion lifts. Well, um, we know exactly what that is. At least anyone who's played the previous games does. Saravak was the primary antagonist of the first game. Though, ultimately, he was revealed to more be just a symptom of Ball's contingency plan to return from beyond death. The uh, God of Murder. Which, from what I understand, is basically what we would have been had we gone with the Dark Urge origin which I do kind of regret not doing for this run. Um, but at the same time, the more I read about it, the more I'm kind of glad I didn't also, because, man, it uh, it gets grim. Oh, I have the magic touch. Wits and blades always sharp. I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, it would have been nice to have a more concrete connection to the previous games. 
But at the same time, it feels like there's already more than enough going on in this game without throwing an additional legacy story arc on top of it. No one back home will ever believe this. Oh, uh, okay, well that's... That's problematic. Shadow, you want to, um... These boots. This will be fun. There we go. Okay. More traps. Let's... Right, right. I think we already disabled the triggering mechanism, but let's mm. knock these things out too, just in case. Best avoid that trap. And no one let's me collect yet. our prize. The webs are interesting. Maybe this is what actually drew the giant spiders to Moonhaven. Oh, uh, okay. Everyone remain calm. Let us exit the room in a calm and orderly fashion. No, wait, let's not, let's not block the door. Didn't really need to jump there, but that's fine. Single file, people. You don't need to go home, but we do need to book it. What am I to do? Charmed, I'm sure. Yes. Well, well, well. Oh, Never I see now. Moment. The book was on a pressure plate. I just totally overlooked that. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Let's march. Actually, can we just Oh, yeah. No time to rest. Turns out we already enough. disabled the actual firing mechanism, so we're fine. The necromancy of Thay. It is not too late. Uh, that's probably fine. But yeah, yeah, I think we'll just keep that safely stowed in our pack for now. Until I get a chance to uh, have the raiders weigh in on what we should do with it. And that said, I think we're pretty much done down here. Obviously, I'll give does. the place another sweep off screen, make sure we didn't miss anything notable, and uh, scoop up all of the surviving vendor trash, minus the stuff that was destroyed by that unfortunate incendiary orb. So, I guess we'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of all that stuff off screen. And we will pick up here next time, as we finally get some much needed rest, and then, uh, I guess, set our sights on something new. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Revenant, Aloise, Crow King LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dranket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goat Lead, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Val and Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. Oh, oh, Master should go see. Let's kill him.